Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. Let me give you this one. I'm going to take you back to Demetrius and Maserati Rick when they was tight getting money. They was getting money and these niggas on 8 Mile and Hubble, the crew of niggas, owed at them some money. So they had been trying to collect the money from the niggas on 8 Mile and Hubble for a while and the niggas, it was apparent that the niggas was not going to pay them. So Demetrius and Maserati said, okay, don't worry about it, we finna get these niggas a present. So Demetrius and Maserati have me park a block over. They walk through this backyard, cut through there, and cut over to the next street and go at these niggas. I'm talking about they go at these motherfuckers with everything. Demetrius got a sawed-off shotgun and Maserati got an AK. And they go over there and lay these niggas down. 8 Mile and Hubble, a few blocks in that area, that area, okay? Now, after they lay these niggas down, they sharp than a motherfucker. They are sharp, gated out, jury, everything. They come back to the car, they say, Eddie, pull us up here to cheat cheese. Now, I'm driving my car. We all in my car because they had me take them down there to do this, so... I'm sitting a block over. I ain't got a clue on what they finna go do. All he says is park here and wait for us. Now, when they come back after I hear all this motherfucking noise and they got weapons in hand and shit, move on down to motherfucking, down to uh, 8 Mile, you understand? Now, Demetrius had a brawl waiting there with another car. He put the heaters in there and tell her, you take these heaters where I told you. So, okay, now, Demetrius is driving a 564-door Mercedes-Benz with gray on the bottom. Maserati Rick is driving a two-seater Maserati, black on the outside, brown on the inside, okay? They go into Chi-Chi's after they do this shit. Now, they in the area of Chi-Chi's. Chi-Chi's at this time was the place to be. It was on 8 Mile in that area. So everybody's going to Chi Chi's lines, getting out of there. These niggas and just went laid down some niggas. Now they going into Chi Chi's to have some drinks and party and fuck with some bitches. Now I slide the fuck on, you understand? Because I was there to get him my brother some motherfucking money and pick me up a package because that's how it always was with us. I was either there to give some motherfucking money or pick up a package. So I needed a package at that time. I was actually there to pick up a package and give him his money and pick up another package. Them niggas was there laying a nigga down, going in the Chi Chi's and partying like a motherfucker. You understand? So at this time, they were still Batman and Rock. They was a lethal couple. I'm going to tell you, it's a few good hits I know Batman and Robin did. And see, they was a hell of a lethal team before getting split up by the pussy. I'm going to be honest with you. They were lethal. Once the pussy split them up, it helped niggas who was beefing with them. It helped the best friends when they split up. Because now they could kill Maserati and then kill Demetrius too. They had them separate. You see what I'm saying? Once they knew they had split them up, they move in to take over the motherfucking business. Everything. Maserati then slipped and introduced them to the connect. Everything. But always remember this. Demetrius had four, five, six different connects. Demetrius used to get cane from everywhere. And I started learning this after Huckabuck. Because them people that that time Huckabuck stood for, Demetrius was getting cane from them for a while after that, and they had excellent cane, and they was out of Texas. So this was a Texas crew. They was a motherfucker, them boys out of Texas. See, I done told y'all how them Mexicans and Latinos, and them, if you don't know them and shit, they'll put you to sleep. You see what they did to Demetrius at first? They put him to sleep, stole all his jewelry and shit, money, everything, left him in the room, butt-ass naked, took the money, took the jewelry, so hit him with that motherfucker knockout, and took every motherfucking thing. But so happened, he happened to know where these motherfuckers was in, in Miami and went and got that motherfucker. And Huckabuck had to come and stand for him. But after that, as I tell you, sometimes a motherfucker realized both of y'all real, y'all start to hook up business while after that because you have a respect. You know, so 
as I say to y'all always, you know, the game was coming from everywhere, starting. Like I tell you, Johnny Jurgens kicked us off. That was the first motherfucker that really gave us some keys where, boom. And then the penitentiary connect kicked in. The penitentiary is a powerful place. The penitentiary is the number one place where you will always find the dope and the connects. Everything is in the penitentiary. As I say to y'all, all bad men are either dead or in the penitentiary. And let me tell you something else. My father used to always say that used to bring me to tears. I am a walking dead man. He said, I'm nothing more than a walking dead man. That shit used to bring me to tears. And I used to be, come on, Pop. You tear me up with that shit, man. You are a walking dead man. That's what he used to say about niggas in jail with life, no possibility of getting out. You are a walking dead man. And that's a powerful thing. It's powerful. So the ones that love you be out fighting with all their might and heart to keep you going and not feeling that way and running the lawyers doing everything you possibly can to get him out. So that's a part of the nightmare of penitentiary, having your parent there, and they die there, and certain things they say there. You know, a walking dead man. That's a deep thing. He is a walking dead man. That is the place you will see walking dead men. That's a hell of a thing. So that's something you have to deal with. That's one of the downsides of the game. As I keep telling everybody, it ain't all glitz and glamour. It's a lot of tears. Once them feds get involved and break everything down, everybody who you thought was real get to telling. Niggas don't want to see you no more. Get to ducking you because you hot. Yeah, that's how it be. And now niggas snitching like 40 going north. It's a motherfucker. It's a nightmare side to the game, and I'm going to bring that to you. All the legal fees, lawyer draining you for money, promising they can do that when they know they can't. It got so to the point, I told you, my father fought. And I give it to you honestly. My father fought like a motherfucker his own case. That first case after running out of money, Roth, Henry Roth Black was there the whole time when he had money and when he did not have money. But my father had a knack for picking up things like that. And law was what he picked up when he had to pick it up to get his ass out of jail. And it's one thing I always remember and I always say. I had a conversation with Cornelius Pitts one day. And Cornelius Pitts looked at me and he said, Eddie, your father was a very powerful man. Not many men could go to jail and get themselves out. Cornelius Pitts was amazed how a man could become a lawyer right in there fighting the case and win and get himself out. That was always something that amazed him by Cornelius Pitts, is that he fought the case and Cornelius knew it and got himself out. Most niggas go in there and just lay down and don't do nothing. My father took the time and stayed in the law library, night and day, had me and Trisha always filing briefs, looking up briefs, looking up case numbers, always. Every minute he was in jail, he was fighting to get out. Even if a lawyer wasn't, he was fighting himself, writing cases, writing it. My father somewhat became a lawyer that last bit. And most people know that, and most people acknowledge that who speak on the fat man that he was brilliant. He was truly a criminal genius, one of a kind. So, as I always say to y'all, peace and love. Be a part of this democracy and get out and vote. Give me a play if you can on my ice of tea. It's a cold shake tea. Put it in a bottle of water, shake it up, drink it, it'll help suppress your appetite. Here are pictures of people before and after who use ISA T. My pictures are on my Facebook before and after 
of me using ice of tea. Here's more pictures of people using ice of tea. This is what they look like. Whatever you may want to look like. Use your ice of tea. It'll help you get there with exercise is important with it now. Go to my link. Go to shop. Go to categories. Go to health and wellness. And there you'll find my Harmony Drop. It is a CBD product. Put two under your tongue. Let it sit 60 seconds and swallow. There you will also find my Alleviate. Alleviate the pain. Rub it on your arms, your leg, wherever the soreness or pain at, and it'll help alleviate it. And as I always say to you all, get out, vote, and be a part of this democracy. Here is my five for five challenge. Lose five pounds in five days. It's a total life change, and life is good. Get out and vote and be a part of this democracy. Vote democratically. We need you. Peace and love. Share this with somebody. And by all means, subscribe and share this. I'm out. Get out and vote. Be a part of this democracy. Go to your primary and vote. Vote and be a part. Be counted for. Make your presence known. Be counted for. Get out and vote. Thank you all to who subscribe and share this. Thank you to everybody who share and listen to my stories and all the people who hit my link and spend money. Thank you to all of you. I really appreciate you. Thank you. And I'll keep the stories coming. Let's be a part of this democracy. Let's get out to the primaries and vote democratically and change this country for the betterment of Afro-American people. I'm out. Peace, love. Go vote. Share this with somebody and subscribe.